Morning everyone, welcome to our webinar on uh, creating shareable videos, how to create shareable videos. I'm Jane, <coughs> Jane Woodley, I'm one of the digital coaches here and I am facilitating this webinar for Ben, Ben Southall, who is going to be um, giving the webinar for you. I'll stay on the line and um, jump in if I see questions happening and things, but basically Ben will be delivering the content. So welcome Ben, really great to see you here. Um, it's a bit informal today. We decided we could have done it remotely, but we thought that seeing as we're both here, we'd just chat to each other and chat to you as well. So here we are. Um, now, just a little housekeeping before we start. We have muted everyone. And the reason we do that um, is so that you don't get each other's background noise and because uh, that can get a bit distracting for you and also for us as well. So if you can't turn muting off, don't worry. It's just because we've done it from this end. Um, do feel free to ask questions as we go. We will do our best to answer them during the webinar, but we have quite a lot to get through, so we may not, but we will definitely answer them at the end if you can stay on the line. And if you have to rush off at 12, um, we will definitely answer you by email or by phone this afternoon or tomorrow as soon as we can. So um, feel free to ask questions as we go, more than happy to take them and we will try and answer them as we go and if not, certainly then afterwards. So welcome Ben. Ben, as you may know, is the original greatest job in the world man. He told me not to say that, but I thought I would anyway. Um, and he has been since then doing a lot of various digital content work and digital work for tourism and events content. And we're really happy to have him here with us today because he's an absolute expert on creating videos. So, off we go. Thanks, Jane. Good morning, everybody, statewide. Good to uh, be in front of a screen here. Normally, I do this in front of a lot of people in a room. So it's a little bit of a different one, this, because what I've done is I've taken the model of that presentation and I've brought it across so that we can use it on the webinar. Now, I did have a fair few links out to YouTube videos, um, but what I'm going to do, the final slide of this presentation will have all of those links. So as I talk through this presentation, there will be parts where at the bottom of the slide it says uh, refer to YouTube link at the end. We'll go through it. I'll talk through what basically the video is about. But then if you get a chance at the end of this, once you've got the presentation and you've got that slide, you can click out and just see the example videos that I've got in there. So today is all about uh, creating shareable videos. I'm just going to pop it up so that you can see me on the, all on the big screen now. This really is what we're going to go through today, um, looking at the benefits of using video content and the different types that we've got. because. It really is to me one of the most crucial things to have these days to share a story, to tell a message and to project yourself to your audience, your global audience, which the Internet allows you to do. Um, it's not technical. Um, it can be seen as a little bit difficult, especially if you're a little bit scared of electronics. So we're going to go through today how to look at your equipment, understand what you've got there in front of you and whether it can be used, really, because we're in an age of smartphones and compact cameras and DSLR all of which are useful for creating video content, but what we're gonna try and do is simplify it, make it as easy for you as we possibly can, so that you can get things on your social media channels, um, your Facebook pages, if you use Twitter, you can get it up on there. Um, ultimately, where you wanna be getting good quality content is up to your YouTube channel, and from there, ultimately, onto your website as well. So we're gonna be looking at that. We're gonna be looking at the strategy that you really need to um, embrace to look at how you can take those videos, and create a bit of a calendar, so you can work out what sort of content you should be shooting, um, what it's going to go on, what medium you want to put it onto, whether it's good for YouTube, whether it's worthy of your website, or whether it's something you want to quickly flick onto your Facebook feed so it's lost uh, in a day or two's time, and how relevant that footage is. Um, we're going to look at how you capture and frame that moment, because I think that's quite an important part. Um, quite often you see videos that uh, users have shot that get put on the news these days, and it's a wobbly footage. You can just about make out what it is. It's out of focus, and you wonder why those news channels have actually even bothered using it. So we're going to get around that idea and, and make some good quality content just by using the simple features that even the most basic of smartphones or digital cameras have got. Then we're going to also look at how you take that content and what you do with it, whether uh, it's unedited and it goes up in its raw format, so raw, unedited, uh, no wording on there, no call to action like your website at the end. That's basically the simplest form of video content you can find. That really is worthy of going onto your, some of your social media channels but not others. And then if you decide you've got a bit more time and you want something a little bit more professional, how you can take that content and edit it to make it really, really good so it's something you're proud of and you're something you want to have uh, embedded onto your website for all eternity that people around the world can see and think, I want to come and get involved in what they're doing. 
Um, and then the part that really, I suppose, is all about um, how you get it up there onto those platforms, how you share it and how you distribute it, whether you're going to do that from your smartphone using your data plan, whether you're going to do that at home using your broadband connection, um, or whether you're going to get someone else to do it because you haven't got much broadband connection at all or any speed, because obviously the bigger your files are, the, the larger your videos, the longer they are, and the higher resolution you shoot them, the bigger the file that you're going to create. So it's important that you've got the uh, the bandwidth wherever you upload it from to make sure that it goes up in its complete form onto those channels. So by the end of, I'm just going to come back to that. By the end of it, we should be able to all of us understand the benefits of using videos and the equipment that you're going to need to do it. So whether it is as simple as the stuff you've got now, or whether you need to go out and make a, a small investment to be able to create decent quality videos that are going to go up onto your social media and website channels. Um, we're going to look at how hopefully you're going to have that strategy built up, so you're going to know what is relevant to shoot and when you're going to want to put it up there. And if it goes up there, KPIs is one of these lovely acronyms that Tourism Events Queensland use, key performance indicators. What is working? What is relevant? Am I shooting the tail of a whale every single day? And is it relevant to go on my website every single day? And how do you track and monitor that? There are, um, there are programs and platforms within um, your social media pages of Facebook and YouTube to really see how many people are seeing those videos, whether they're sharing them, because that's something you want to try and tag onto the back of. If you can get other people to share your, your content, that's going out to a much bigger audience than you've got sitting in front of you. So how you look at those things and how you track them. Um, and how to make the best sorts of videos for your business. So something that represents what you're about, something that is high quality, something that really summarizes the experience people can have with you, whether you're accommodation, whether you're a tourism operator, or whether you're the local tourism marketing company really how best you represent yourself. And then also you'll know how we're gonna put those things up there on those different platforms, the loading, the sharing, and the distributing your video. Um, this is a, a fun little one that Susan Maynard asked me to put in here earlier on. This is really about viral video. Everybody wants to create a viral video, but do you need to have something that's like that? Um, I think out of the probably 450 different videos I've created in the last five years for, for YouTube, I think one of them has gone viral and that's about it. Doesn't mean it's a big win, doesn't mean it's a big failure. Sometimes you've got things that people love seeing and sometimes they want to share it with other people. Viral could be if you've got, normally you've got 10 followers and you manage to get it out to 100 followers, that's probably pretty much viral in your, your digital space. Other people look at 50 or 60 million hits. If you look at a Miley Cyrus video, it might go to ridiculous amounts of people around the world. But is that always good? Do you want that thing to be going out there? So don't always try and create something viral. Think about something that's going to be interesting, fun, and represents what you do. Now, this is, this is a, a quick uh, video that at the end, there'll be this slide with these links on. This is the first one of those. So we're at the bottom of the slide, I've put external link to YouTube video. There'll be a, a, a final slide, the last one of the series, which will basically be a click through for people to be able to see this online. This is just a load of different infographics that shows you how useful online video is to telling a story and telling a message to what I still term as the YouTube generation. Um, people that sit down in their, at their computer, at their tablet, or on their phone, and they flick, and they go through a page extremely quickly, and they, uh, they don't have much of an attention span, pretty much like me. So what this video will do will just really showcase some of the, uh, the benefits of using video, um, some of the highlights of using it, and good case studies around the world of where it's actually worked to people's advantages. Why we use video. Um, it's quite an important part, this one, really. Um, you've got to think about um, how we used to do things in the olden days, I suppose. Um, people used to have a website that was purely text. So people would sit down and just read that text from top to bottom. They would go through that. And then as uh, broadband speeds upped and up, we added photos into websites. And it meant that people could look at photos and flick through. They wouldn't read all the text. they just look at the photos and the pretty bits. And that's how they tell their story. People want a bit more than that these days. It's almost a combination of the text, the spoken text and the photos. And that format is digital video. That's how we get a message across these days. That's how people around the world share a story. Ultimately, that's what video is doing. It's allowing people to have a window into your world to see what you're doing, whether it's watching the dog chase a bug around the room, whether it's watching the whales in Harvey Bay, or whether it's delivering a webinar like this. Video is an interactive means of looking somebody in the eye, understanding what they're talking about, and hearing their message quickly and in a way that uh, they can feel an affinity with. 
Um, websites, if they're well made um, and they're embedded um, with videos, will increase your credibility. They'll increase your YouTube um, search recognition, so you'll pop up much higher up in the rankings if you've got decent videos that are well tagged. Um, we'll go into that later on about what the tagging is of a video once you put it into YouTube. Um, it allows you to tell the story of your business. It allows you to tell people what you're about, what makes you up as a business, um, why you're fun to engage with, why you'd want to be the people, the tourists that come and spend their dollars with you. So it delivers that, that heartfelt story. Doesn't need to be a TV presenter doing it. It could be you, the owner of the business, doing it. And don't ever run away from doing the presenting side of things. It's not difficult to do. The first time it might seem a little challenging, but if you need to practice being a presenter, sit down in front of Skype and have a conversation with somebody on the other side of the world. That will get you confident with your own image in front of the screen, and it will also get your confidence up so that you can stand in front of a camera and record yourself delivering a message about your business. It's very, very important, that part. Digital video content also allows you to keep your social media channels alive and fresh. So social media is all about what's happening here and now. Anything that is over usually a day old or sometimes half a day old has gone and disappeared off the bottom of a timeline. So most of you out there will have your own Facebook page. You might have a business page as well. Um, and it's all about keeping those channels fed with interesting information. Videos are a great way to do that. But be aware that once you've delivered it onto a social media channel, it arrives at the top, an hour later it's halfway down, an hour later it's almost at the bottom, and six hours later it's disappeared until people want to scroll down and find it again. Social media has got some funny ways of thing, doing things. Facebook and Twitter very, disappear very, very quickly. YouTube will virtually stay there forever. If you decide you're going to upload it to your YouTube channel, it's there until you decide you're going to take it off. So there's a lot more permanency to having it on YouTube and even more so for having it on your website. So we're talking today about those shareable videos of Twitter and Facebook and ultimately YouTube. I'm just gonna look at a quick question. Someone's just raised their hand. Okay, right. Very difficult to hear. Very it's difficult. Hear I'm just gonna answer a quick question here. Very difficult to hear presenter. Okay, is my internet on or we're experiencing delays? Sometimes, um, People, we, we do sometimes get delays depending on your bandwidth, but um, we are recording this video, so if you are having trouble hearing it now, it will be published in the next day or so on the Digital Ready website. So um, just bear with us if you can. It's not something that we can affect, I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can you please raise your hands if you can hear us now? You've got a little hand icon. Um, if you can hear okay now, can you have one hand going up? Can you just... Click the hand icon and check. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So the majority of the majority people have of put us their hands yeah. up there. If you can't hear, we do apologise for that. Again, it's not something we can control directly, um, but we will be publishing this recording, and um, the sound is normally better on the recording. So um, apologies if you're having trouble here. Thanks, Jane. Okay, cool. We'll come back into it then. Um, just looking then, we've gone through that one, um, why using it? The benefits of doing it, the benefits of having digital video are there to see. You can show off the reality of your experience. It helps you increase the traffic to your website and your social media. So um, if you get it onto um, YouTube, your video content, and it's up there and you're proud of it, and you've put a description in, and you've put a title in, and you've put lots of tags in, tags being the identifiers of that video. So for instance, I was going to create a video about the Brisbane River. I put hashtags in there of Brisbane, River, Queensland, Australia. So if anybody was searching under those tags, you would have more chance of popping up if you would put things that relate to that video within those tag description boxes. Um, it helps you gain consumer trust in what you do. There's nothing uh, more reassuring to me than the owner of a business actually talking on their own website about what they do, about their product, about the rooms that they have, the menu they've just introduced, uh, the experience you can have on a on a um, on the slide going through the rainforest. If it's a member of staff or it's the business owner talking to their audience, that to me is the best way to gain trust and the best way for people to understand that it's you and you believe in what you're doing. And that, I suppose, then comes down to that next point. You engage with the community like you've never done before. It's a big thing that one: engaging with your community, getting them talking about what you do, sharing your experience. And ultimately, if you get all those bits right, it will increase the number of people that visit your website and hopefully your sales too. 
So this is the way that we can deliver a feeling. This is three different icons. Now this again was the, the, the slide on the, the picture on the right there was originally an embedded video. So number one, if you imagine this just written on a website, join our adventurous rafting trip for a memorable day on the water. Now if you just read that with no photo or anything, yes, you, you get an understanding of what it's about. But if you add a photo like the one on the left, all of a sudden you start to picture what it's about the experience. You can almost feel the water, you can see the smiles in people's faces and a little bit of fear sometimes. But if you then make that photo into a video, and if you have a look at that video once the, once the um, presentation is done and we've sent this through, you'll be able to see what this does. Now this video on the right is about 15 seconds long. It's a quick piece with me presenting to camera. It's then a quick piece with the, the rafting instructor talking to camera. And then it's also just some footage of going down, the point of view vision of going down that river. It really gives people an idea of what it involves going for a day rafting up in the up on the Tully River in Cairns. So it just gives you that extra element. It's a three-dimensional perspective of what's going on with your experience. So different types of online video content. What have we got here? We've got professionally produced for your website. Now, this is the top end stuff. So a broadcast company that's gonna cost you X number of dollars, probably quite a few, to come in and uh, write a script for you, to probably get a presenter in, to produce it for you, um, to then cut it ready for your website. It's an expensive way to do it. The way that we can go about doing something for our social media channels and website is by looking at social media much more. The instant upload of social media, which is taking it straight from your smartphone and uploading it onto your channels, or the edited upload for social media, which allows you to personalize it a bit more, to cut out the bits that you don't like, to put your certainly your website description on there. Um, and they're the two that we're gonna concentrate on today, instant upload and edited upload for social media. Just quickly going through that one, that was the, the first one of those three was a professionally produced video. So what, what that might have people doing is actually showcasing off their business um, at a very high level. So if you imagine a, an expensive digital production company want to show what they can do for you as a customer. This would be a well put together expensive video, probably got some nice highlights and logos in there. Um, it's got lots of good color grading. So it's a very, very professional piece of work that almost could be broadcast onto the television as well as being used on a website. Um, it allow it would allow you to show off your services and facilities. You could use customer testimonials. There might be lots of information about your region. All of these different types of video that you could create could be put together by a professionally produced video company, or you could do any of these yourself. You really could create your own welcome message. You could meet the team. So if you've got a new chef that's on, that's particularly proud of his menu, how about sitting down and creating a little video just about the new menu that he's doing, why he's chosen to do it, get him to talk to the camera. Customer testimonials are a good one because it's a real person's opinion of what the experience is like. And ultimately that's what every single digital platform is looking for these days. The honest Joe's opinion of what it's like. TripAdvisor, um, when you have feedback and, and testimonials on, on websites, it's all about what somebody thought of the experience. And if you can get a customer who's had a really good time to sit down in front of your phone for 30 seconds and just talk about the best bits that they enjoyed of the day, that's a great thing to put up there on your social media channels. Looking at the next bit, so the instant upload. Why you'd use instant upload of video? Well, this is the quick stuff. This is the fun, engaging stuff. So I'm imagining now a tourism operator in the Whit Sundays goes out on a sailing boat every single day to go around the Whit Sunday Islands. These are the interesting parts of the day. So if it's the fish eagle that's diving next to the boat, if it's the humpback tail whale slapping the water, all of these things are fun and interesting. If it's people sitting dangling their feet off the side of the boat, that captures the experience of what it's like to be part of that tour. Think about getting those short little grabs that are gonna be used straight away on your Facebook and Twitter feeds. They're only gonna be around for a short period of time. They will go from your feed very quickly. So you don't have to worry too much about them being really, really well produced or edited. And they're generally only gonna last for up to 60 seconds. Any more than that, and you're gonna lose people's attention span. Remember that people that look at the internet these days spend between about eight and 30 seconds on a page and that's it, and then they're gone. They're off to something else. It's an extremely distracting thing, the internet. As soon as you see something popping up in the right-hand column, you look at it, you get distracted, and you click on it. People are gonna do that with your video, however good it is. So think about these instant social media uploads as being a maximum of 60 seconds long. The beauty of the smartphone is that you've got the video there and then, um, Jen, I've just got a quick thing coming up for slow oh, collection. Yeah. Would you like to stop sharing? No. No, cool. 
Sorry, back with you. Just quick pop-up box came there. Um, so this one is um, the smartphone. The best thing about the smartphone is once you've taken that video, you can get it up onto your social media feed straight away as long as you've got reception. Often the stuff that you're going to put up is unedited, so you need to make sure it's good from the start to the end. Think about it. Know when you press that red button to record on a smartphone, it's recording from that moment. So don't start off with, oh, is it? Oh, oh quick. And then go back and focus on the person. You need to think about having that car, that smartphone set up so you're recording from the moment you press the button to the moment you stop press um, you press that button to stop the recording. That's a really important thing. If you want to look professional and you want to use social media, then do it, but know your equipment. Know what you're going to be doing and how to start and stop it. Now these two, I want you to have a look at these when we get back out. These are just screenshots of two videos that I think really summarize very, very well um, how social media can be used to share an experience and show something that's extremely fun. So on the left, uh, that is an octopus on Lady Elliot Island. There's a girl called Emma, who's the activities manager, who every single day goes out with her little compact camera and she just gets a short 15 to 30 second grab of something fun that's going on on the island. It's a waterproof camera, this one. It's a little compact, probably costs her about three to $400. You get this footage, you go underwater, you uh, find the creature you're going to film, and you take this short little piece. It doesn't need to have any voiceover, it doesn't need to have any presenter on it. It's literally, this is what we see on our island. Now, the one on the right um, is probably what I would say one of the best ever short clips for social media that I've seen. Now, this was taken by Neil uh, Murgard out on the lark at 1770. The one thing he did get wrong with this, however, he held his phone like a phone and like a camera. So he was holding it upright and not like the image on the left where it's actually in landscape. He'd have got so much more of this in if the camera had been tilted around 90 degrees or the phone had been tilted around 90 degrees. If you click through on that video at the end, this will show you an amazing experience. So coming back on their boat, the MJ Cook, MV Cook, back into 1771 day from the reef. All of a sudden there were dolphins underneath the boat and then about 10 seconds later, there's another pod of dolphins joining them and then another 10 seconds later, there's manta rays under the water with them. This really did summarize how amazing the Great Barrier Reef is and the sort of experience that a tourist can have if they're out there on the water doing it for themselves. I strongly advise you go and have a look at those two video clips from the slide at the end once we've got there. Um, really, really a good idea to show you what you can grab and the sorts of things that are going on in your normal everyday life if you're an operator that you can capture and put up onto your social media feeds. So edited social media. This is the next step. If you've got um, you've got some great raw footage and you want to put it together in something more professional, this may be where you're going to put it onto your website or a YouTube channel. It's going to be there for a bit longer. Your website, you won't change that often. You might have a gallery of images and videos, and this sort of video is the one that you want to be proud of. It wants to tell a story. It wants to really go and have a start, a middle, and an end. So think about how you're going to do this. The one on the right that you can see there, the image, is a screenshot of something we did for the Harvey and the Humpbacks campaign this year. It was a call to action to the operators, and it was just me presenting to the camera, but it had my name, so you can add these supers or titles at the bottom. Um, it allows you to then chop between two or three different sets of footage. So it went from me presenting to Susan Maynard sat by the pool. Uh, we then popped up her name. It then gave the final slide of this video was a website. It was the website that we wanted people to visit if they wanted to apply for the, for the seminar that we were giving in Harvey Bay. What it allows you to do is tell a little story, and that's what you've got to have. It maybe takes a little bit more scripting to do it, a little bit more thoughts behind the story you're trying to tell. Once you've got those key bits, and you can sometimes storyboard this, is what they do in the, the, the industry, where they'll go down and they'll look at the video that they want for the opening, the middle part, and the closing part. Then you go out there and, and get it. Go out there and get that footage. You've got two or three takes to go and get that before you get it right, usually. And then you can come back and you want to then think about how you're going to edit this video. It doesn't have to be taxing, it doesn't have to be difficult. Anybody that's literate in any way with a camera, and if you can put together a PowerPoint presentation, you can edit video, believe me. There are plenty of different platforms to do it with these days. Uh, whether you're using a Windows PC, you can use Windows Movie Maker, probably the most entry level of all video production programs you can get. If you're on an Apple system, there's things like iMovie, which again, my niece, who's uh, seven years old, has made a video on iMovie for me over from England. So if she can do it, you guys and girls can certainly do it. Um, and then there's the other ways you can do it, which is directly on your uh, your smartphone. There's uh, there's programs within 
most tablets now and uh, on most smartphones that allow you to take the, the videos that you've shot using that same smartphone, import them into the program and edit them and play around them until you've got your own story that you're proud of. Um, so that's the edited side of social media. This is generally what we have in our pockets. These are the things that we have as, as tourism operators or digital people that go out these days. And, and whether you're taking a photo for Instagram or whether you're capturing a video just to laugh at with your friends later on in the day, generally everyone's got a smartphone or generally everyone's got a camera. The differences between the two, however, um, there's a little bit there. If you look at the one on the left-hand side, you've almost always got a smartphone in your pocket. The phrase at the bottom is a great one. They say the best camera is the one that's with you. So it doesn't matter what you've got as long as you can use it. The good thing about a smartphone is you can almost always upload instantly to your social media feed. So it's online. As long as it's got an internet connection that's of a decent speed and you're not 50 k's out to sea on Lady Musgrave Island or you're not in the middle of the outback where there's absolutely no reception or sometimes in Brisbane on Optus, um, then if you've got smartphones, you've generally got a way you can upload that video straight away. And you can also, with a smartphone, download apps. Apps and applications obviously allow you to edit those videos to make them something that's a little bit more permanent, something that you can feel proud of, that you can then upload onto your YouTube channel or your, or your website itself. On the right-hand side of that page, there's the, a normal digital camera. So that's a little Nikon waterproof one there. Um, they're generally a much better sensor because they are a dedicated camera that is all about taking photos and video. If you can get yourself one like a Nikon or a Canon or a Panasonic that are ruggedized like that. You can chuck them in a pocket, you can chuck them in the, in the glove box on the boat. They can get covered in salt, they can get knocked around, much more so than a smartphone will. But what you've got to do at the end of that day is you can't upload directly from there. You'll have to take that card out of the camera, you'll have to then put it into your computer, download the footage and the video footage off that camera onto the computer, and from there you can then upload it onto your social media channel. So it's much more of a two-stage process. The good thing about these, uh, the professional digital cameras like on the right as well is they usually have a much better zoom function. There's better glass on the lenses, so you'll get a much clearer, better, higher resolution picture. Um, and you'll also get this better quality zoom function. But what it does also do, it means you're dealing with a much bigger file. Every time you go up in quality of a camera and you get better resolution, you're also upping the size of the file that's being produced. So you'll have something that's a little bit uh, more unwieldy to deal with. If you're doing it on your computer, it's a lot easier. But then remember when you're uploading it onto your social media channel or your social uh, or your YouTube channel or your web page, it's going to be a much bigger file. And there are limitations sometimes within Facebook and Twitter on the maximum video size you can upload. So they're generally the two different types. Other people have different sorts of cameras. So there's dedicated the old handy cams that everybody used to have that are sort of called camcorders these days. Or there's digital SLR cameras. So the big professional photo cameras that all stand out double up for taking video. That's what I use most of the time for my high quality professional video production. But the majority of the time when it's just me creating content for my own web page, I'm flicking around with one of these. I've got my iPhone, it's a simple, basic old four, it doesn't do anything special, it just takes good quality video, and I use iMovie within here that allows me to then edit that video and put it up onto social media channels. So like I say, the best camera is the one that's ultimately with you at the time when you need it. Quick things about this as well, top one, social media is all about what's happening now and sharing that moment. So a phone is much better for doing it there and then. You won't forget to do it when you get home. And that's often the thing where I would work quite heavily with the whale watching operators in Harvey Bay. And not only are they the, the people that bake the scones and the profiter rolls to go out on the boat during the day, not only are they the skippers and the drivers of the cars that pick up the guests from the hotels, they're also the people at the end of the day that tie up the boat, wash it down and go home. So the last thing they want to be doing is then taking video content off a camera to put it into a computer, to then upload it onto their social media pages. If you've got a phone, it's a simpler, quicker way of doing it. Don't worry necessarily about being broadcast quality because ultimately social media is about capturing the moment. And if you had a phone on you for that moment, that's what people are going to want to see. These are five key points to remember about social media um, uploading devices like a phone and like a, and like a camera. Always think about it at the start of the day. Make sure your phone is fully charged or you've got a way to charge your phone once you're out on the water or you're in your car doing the tour or whatever it is that you do. 
it's the most frustrating thing when I get to 12 or 11 or 10 percent and I think oh, I've still got half the day to go. How can I charge up the phone? Make sure it's done at the start of the day or you've got a means to do it on the way. Another quick thing as well, this one is a very important one. Memory cards get it bigger and bigger and bigger these days. I make it a matter of habit these days when I get home at the end of the day to put my iPhone on charge and take all of the imagery and video off it. Or if it's my camera, I'll take the SIM card, the memory card out, I'll put it into my computer and I'll take every single photo and video off there and then format the card afterwards. Make sure it's done before you format it and make sure that memory is nowhere near full because you don't want to, when that lovely fish eagle is swooping over the boat, have to think, which of my photos am I gonna delete? Because you just won't have time to do it and the moment will be gone. So two crucial things, the battery's full and the memory isn't full. Um, if you're gonna upload to a social media channel, um, be au fait with the app that you're using. Be confident with the one that you're using. Play with it beforehand. If it's the first time you're gonna go and do it and it's little Johnny's graduation day, Make sure you've practiced beforehand because if you're not, if you're dallying around and you're pressing the wrong buttons, you'll get frustrated and you'll miss the moment. So make sure the app that you want to use is uploaded, it's installed, and that you know how to use it as well. There is a little bit of a, uh, a button press combination that you have to work out on a phone or on your compact camera to switch between video mode or photo mode. Usually it's fairly simple, but in the heat of the moment again, these fingers get a little bit frustrated, they jump all over the press, they press the wrong buttons and you miss the moment. So know how you flick that switch or press that button or toggle between video and photo mode. And also where the start stop button is. Remember those videos that you see of people and suddenly the first three seconds of the phone moving all over the place and then it starts. If you've got a video that starts like that, People will disappear very quickly. If you've got a lot of video that starts off and it's all over the place, it's not in focus, you'll lose your audience pretty quickly. So know that when you press that red button, you're starting the recording, and when you press that red button at the end, that will stop the recording. Crucial things to have. If you're using a smartphone, ultimately having a 3G or Wi-Fi connection is very, very important for sharing it on social media. If you've got neither of those, it will stay on your phone, it will probably get lost in the ether, you'll forget about it, and you've missed your opportunity to put your daily upload onto your social media feed. Really important one, that one, the Wi-Fi connection at a house or 3G connection if you're out in the wilds and you've got your smartphone with you. So what do you do with the videos? Get them up there onto the social media channels as quickly as you possibly can. It doesn't have to be within seconds, ideally within an hour or two of taking the vision, get it up there because the sooner you get it up there, the sooner people will be thinking, well, that's the sort of thing I want to be doing. I would love to go and have that tourism experience. How do I go and do it? If it's days or it's weeks later, you've almost lost that niche in your market. You know, there's only four months in the year, really, when Harvey Bay is full of whales. And if you put whale watching videos up sometime in December or January, People will see them and they'll love the idea of going and doing it, but you've got to wait another six months before the whales are back in town. So it's about getting published video up there as quickly as you possibly can. If you're gonna put your unedited clips up there, and um, they're where you're going to put those quick, quickly shot, fun, engaging, raw clips up onto Facebook or Twitter. Get them up there as quickly as you can. It's easy from, uh, from an iPhone, certainly I'm gonna talk about iPhone, it's probably pretty much the same with an Android phone or any other smartphone. If I've taken a video, I can look back through my photo album now. And from there you can share, as long as you set up your accounts from Facebook and Twitter to work on your phone, you can share directly those videos straight onto your channels from there. So it's a very simple process of take the phone, shoot the video, look at it in your photo album, share it straight onto those platforms of Facebook and Twitter. Um, you can also now start to do a lot more with Instagram. It's something I haven't really covered off in this presentation, but Instagram now has the ability to not just take photos that you can make look beautiful, even if they're not, but also the ability to take videos, 15 seconds worth of video. Um, so you can capture those moments, 15 seconds worth, put it up on your Instagram feed, share that from there onto your Twitter and Facebook channels as well. So different ways and different methods are evolving all the time, but for the sake of this webinar, we're looking really pretty much at instantly shareable Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube videos. Now, YouTube, I think, is, is slightly different for me because I always like to think that if I'm gonna put it on YouTube, I, I want to be proud of it because ultimately, 
anybody that's uh, one of your friends on Facebook can look at your feed. Anybody that's one of your um, your Twitter friends can look at your Twitter feed. But generally, if you've got an open public video on YouTube, anybody from around the world can look at it and see it. They don't have to be a friend of yours. If you've put it up there, it's in the public domain and they can look at it as long as they've searched under the right thing. So Harvey Bale, Humpback Whales, if they've searched using those tags, up could pop your video. So you want to be proud of it. You want to make sure that what people are seeing is a polished piece that you know represents your company well. It's also quite a good idea to add some of your more professional, well-finished pieces that you like and you put up onto YouTube to get them onto your website. You might have a, a gallery that might have lots of nice photos in it, but putting video in there allows people when they're scrolling through, looking at you and looking at other different operators who might do a very similar thing. If you've got good quality video up there and they've immersed themselves in your world through that video, they're more than likely gonna come to you to book their experience or to your area to see what you're doing. Um, this is this is one that I've developed a bit more recently as well. This This point here, ask your friends to tag themselves or share and retweet the video. So sharing is something you do on Facebook, retweeting is something you do on Twitter. What this allows you to do is use somebody else's audience. So you might think, I've only got 10 friends for my business on Facebook, or I've only got 100 followers on Twitter. If someone retweets your tweet, or if they share your post on Facebook, instantly it opens it up to their audience as well. So all of a sudden, if it's just you, and then five of your friends share it and five of their friends. You get this big umbrella effect going on where you could, by the end of the day, have a video that you put out to your 10 friends that could have hit a 1,000 people by the end of the day. So if you get your friends to go into the photos, uh, sorry, into the video and tag themselves if they appear in it, or ask, uh, ask other people in your area to share it for them. So if you work well with the local tourism operator or if you're um, pretty handy with the local bakery down the road, you're in an area trying to sell that area. You're trying to get people to come and stay and play in the area. So promote other uh, accommodations, promote other operators, promote other experiences by sharing their content as well. So if you're, let's go back to Harvey Bay, if you're the mantra in Harvey Bay and you think, well, I've only got my boring hotel, what goes on here? Why would I want to put stuff on social media? Put your stuff up about the shit, put the stuff up about the new menu, but then think outside the box. Think, okay, what? why do people come here? Well, let's go on to the other tourism operators in Harvey Bay and share their content. So start sharing day trips to Fraser Island. Start sharing um, Tasman Ventures content. All of the different people that make up your area or why the people come to that area. So share their content and ultimately, if they see you doing it, they'll start doing it too. It becomes this reciprocating agreement between you. It's an unwritten rule, but it's one of the ones that might just work in increasing your audience and where people ultimately see your videos. And that little bottom one is there, exactly. Help each other out. People come to your region to stay and play. So the strategy of why you would create video, what you're trying to do. You're trying to get people to look inside your world, see what goes on, work out what is happening um, and why people want to look at what's happening there. Um, my phone is just ringing, sorry for the distraction slightly there. Um, to give people a window into your world. So share what happens every single day if you need to. If you've got a job and you're out on the water and you're seeing incredible things every day, you're going out to the Great Barrier Reef, tell people that story, share that experience. If you take a drive in the morning to the coffee shop that you run and you happen to see kangaroos lounge on the edge of the road every morning, one morning maybe stop and take a little bit of a video and just show people what goes on in your world every single day. The calendar of what, where and when is very, very important. Um, social media is about what's happening now. Anything older than a few days has generally disappeared off the feed or the timeline and it's just lost in the system. Unless, of course, it's on YouTube where it stays for a much longer time. So think about trying to get something up that's fresh and creative and a little bit different every time. Um, there's an there's a, the operator up in air called uh, Yongala Dive and Heather there is pretty good because at the end of at the beginning of each day, um, they upload photos from the day before. So they've got people that were out on the boat with them at the Yongala having a dive. They upload the photos. They also put video up there. One of the things that also they do is they do a bit of a weekly summary video. So on a Monday morning, when you think, oh, how can we get people to come here this week? Get a tripod, stick a camera on a wall, stand in front of that camera, press record, or have someone else press it ideally, and just stand there and say, 
I can't wait for the week ahead. We have got ideal conditions here on the Great Barrier Reef. We've got almost flat calm for the next three days. Visibility is around 30 metres. We've seen whale sharks. We've seen manta rays. We even had a bull shark come past. This week is going to be simply fantastic. If you can put that sort of thing once a week up on your Facebook page, it gives people an understanding of what's going on. So let's take jungle surfing up in the north of Queensland, up in the Daintree. At the beginning of the week, they could turn around and say, it's almost the wet season here, but that won't stop us getting our harnesses on, putting our hats on and swinging through the trees at jungle surfing. Last week, we had people visiting from Bulgaria, from England. Um, it's an eclectic bunch that we have here. Here's three of our um, instructors to tell you all about why you want to come here and visit us in November. So these sorts of pieces that you can put together really give people just a bit of a, um, a weekly understanding of what goes on, why they want to come and visit you and the, certain, and the sort of things that you offer at different times of the year. So that's how, that's how you create your sort of weekly wrap of events. If you've got any special activities that are coming up in the town, maybe give them a bit of a showcase too. So for instance, the horse racing on the beach at Mackay. If that's coming up, maybe that is a, that's worthy of a post from the local tourism organisation. This week in Mackay, we've got this going on. We've got the bass fishing competition and we've got some tourists coming in from different parts of the world that have booked with us. It's just about giving people an understanding. Share your life, share your experiences, share the events and the activities that are happening in your region, not necessarily the ones that you're running, but what ones that might draw people into the town for a longer stay that might get them to come and enjoy your experience too. Don't forget to add photos too, once a day to keep things ticking over. So it's not just about video. Video is a little bit more time consuming, um, but if you can get photos popping up onto your timeline, onto your Twitter feed, it gives people things to still engage with. It gives people things a chance to, you know, to see what's happening in your world. And then you can start to drip feed those bits of video in. If it's once a week or once every 10 days, for instance, um, my feed, I suppose, I only put a video up on there maybe once every 12 to 14 days. I'm not always out doing fun, exciting things. It might seem like it from uh, from my blog or my Facebook page, but not always not always worthy of creating video about. So photo quite often breaks up the necessity to bring video in the entire time. And think about quality, not quantity. That's a really crucial thing. So don't just put it up for the sake of putting it up. If it is good enough and it is a good picture in focus of a fish eagle on the front of the boat, that's a good thing. If it's out of focus and it's blurry and there's loads of wind noise in the microphone, think about maybe giving it a miss. So monitoring your content. This is uh, this is the part about is it working? What's successful? This is um, a couple of quick screenshots of Facebook. So this is my uh, on the left hand side. It's a, an expedition I did earlier this year called the Aussie Eight. Um, you can see there's a big graph that drops away vastly. Um, the big pink dots at the bottom on this page show where there was a lot of success, where there was posts going up, and where people were coming and visiting my Facebook page. Generally, those pink dots were videos that were going up there. As the, tail, as the tailing off of that graph drops away, that was the end of the expedition and all of a sudden the audience had disappeared. So you can go into your page within your uh, Facebook channel and you can start to see what people are looking at, what they're commenting on, what they're liking. It gives you a chance to look at those reports and see what was successful. Look at the days that you posted videos, see if they worked. If they didn't work, well, think about trying to repost them, see if it was just because no one was there, or if it's maybe because the content wasn't of the quality that people would want from you. You don't have to produce the best stuff in the world, but it's got to be something that engages people and makes them want to come back and visit or share the information. There's also the opportunity within YouTube to do virtually exactly the same thing there. So YouTube has this same reporting system. You can go in there and look at the analytics of what works. On the right hand side of the screen there, there's a slide that shows all the different videos that I've put in. Um, it shows the number of views you've got, the estimated minutes that were spent watching that video, um, and the average view duration as well. So how many people stayed around and on average, how long were they there for? You can see the videos that work, you can see the ones that don't work, which maybe you can then nip in the bud and decide that's the last one of those we'll do. Maybe we'll do meet the team this week, or maybe we'll do meet the chef, or maybe we'll do a run round of the boat that we've just bought. So different content, different types of content, and monitoring how exactly it works. So, what on earth should I be shooting? This is always a good one. Um, sometimes I go out there and shoot for the sake of shooting, and I wonder if anyone's ever going to watch it. For instance, this morning, my little 
pug puppy that's 10 months old had a beetle in its mouth and it was chasing her around the room and I thought it was great fun but ultimately I made the decision it's not going to be good for my Twitter feed I'm not all about pug puppies I'm about adventure and the great outdoors so that one stayed off but all these sorts of topics you can think about events that are going on in your town or your region or ones that you might visit and go to it's not necessarily about things that are always just happening in your region for instance it might be you went away to a different sort of market that was happening in a different town if it's your audience and they like markets they'll want to see other markets around the place you're not losing customers to those people ultimately what you're doing is you're generating a community based around market trading and market stalls nature always a good one um, I came across from the UK and uh, from the UK everybody is scared of what goes on in Australia because everything is going to kill you whether it's spiders or snakes or sharks or whatever it is something here is ultimately going to kill someone so people love and have this this horrible perverse curiosity about things that happen in nature in Australia and you might walk past kangaroos every day on your way to work or you might walk down the beach and see the same pelican that sits on the same post every morning but to a global audience, that's fascinating about Australia. They're the sorts of things people want to be seeing. These are always good ones. Landscapes, sunrise and sunset. I can't get enough of that big fiery orange ball rising off the horizon at the start of the day and going down at the end of the day. It makes beautiful photos. That golden hour of sunrise and sunset at the start and the end of the day will make videos much, much better. Um, Vox Pops. This is a good one. This thing needs a bit more thinking about though. Vox Pops. Um, basically, these are short, quick, snappy interviews with people. So whether they're customers that are coming um, to your tourism experience for the first time, whether it's a Vox Pop with the owner of the business about how engaged he is with it and how much he loves the area, or whether it's about your chef as the new menu they put together. Vox Pops are a great way to get people to understand your business and the sort of people that work within it. Um, daily and weekly reports. We've covered that one off already. That might just be uh, looking forward to the week that we've got ahead and how good the weather's going to be. Or it might be a, a post report once you've just come back in. So the skipper of the boat that comes into the harbour at Harvey Bay every day. Straight up to camera. Quick interview. How was the day out there, Keith? Oh, Ben, you wouldn't believe it. We've seen 15 sets of humpback whales. We've had a mother and a calf breaching. We've had tail slapping. Those sorts of reports just give people an understanding of how... In how good the experiences they're going to have when they're with you um, and that one people in the moment is a crucial one um, people that are I'll, I'll use the same one um, sitting on the edge of a boat with their feet off the rails drinking a glass of champagne if that's what they do when they're having your experience film people doing that get their permissions but get people doing those things swinging on the slide through the trees all those sorts of things are what you should be shooting what's interesting and what will work and just to break down very specifically here tourism organizations you can look at all these different sides I think I've gone through most of them now but events markets cruise boats interesting boats that have arrived in the marina so lovely cruise boats that have arrived for just a couple of days get some vision of that um, iconic views of the region so Mackay looking down the pioneer valley for me was one of those beautiful views that you can put yourself back in the, the days of the early pioneers those sorts of interesting iconic views um, we've done the Vox Pops accommodation you might think you've only got a hotel that's got the same number of beds and it's the same day in day out but look at the local events that go on around your town and around the hotel, the markets. Um, summarize the good place to go for a run. Or if, you, if you've got customers that are staying with you, go. You would not believe we've got a 20 minute run from the hotel that comes back along the beach. Perfect place to go and exercise in the morning. Uh, we've done the Vox Pops one. Now, this is operators. This is, this is where you've got the world at your grasp here. You're out experiencing exactly what tourists want to experience. So capture anything and everything that goes on. You are the, you've got the perfect foundation to produce some really, really good instant video content. Um, so this is just some quick examples for the tourism operators. And the boat leaving the marina, um, the tour bus driving around, snorkelers from on board and in the water, whatever activity you have on offer, whether you're panning for gold in the middle of the outback, whether you're riding a horse down the beach at um, Horseshoe Bay, all those sorts of different areas are great things to create video content of. Um, people enjoying themselves. You want people to come and enjoy themselves with you. That's why they'll come on a holiday. That's why they'll come and have that experience. So make sure there's smiles and happy good faces in those times. Um, there's lots of experiences potentially where you can have interactions with nature. Um, kangaroos on the way to work, cockatoos on the balcony, snorkeling and the things you see underwater. So that waterproof compact camera, perfect time to get that vision of uh, a load of coral, a load of different things happening underwater. That's a really good time. If you're in Cairns, bats take off every single night from the city and that always fascinates me. 
you've got a good enough camera and you can capture that, nice thing to put up on social media. Um, oh yeah, and just a quick one. Sunrise, sunset, thunderstorms are part of life here. You can't have rainforest without rain. So film the thunderstorms. They're a great part of why people come here. Capturing and framing the moment. Um, that video that we looked um, that was of the, the lark, that was of the, uh, sorry, the film that you will see later, that was of the, of the bow of the boat. So the dolphins and manta rays were underneath it. If he turned that camera from the image on the left into the image on the right, you can see what happens. Suddenly you get a TV screen of a view. You don't get this short, little, tiny, upright portrait view, which has usually got two big black bars down the side. You get this view and everybody can see what's happening then. Just to go through these moments pretty quickly. Be prepared from the moment you press record from start to end. So that's another one. We'll go over it over and over again, that one. Make sure you're ready for the recording when you press the button at the start all the way through to the end. If you're doing a piece to camera, if you're talking to the camera, you're doing an interview or a box pop, on a smartphone or a, or a compact camera, unless it's a really still day, you're going to get wind noise. So think about putting it, the camera into a clear case or a bag because it will stop the wind noise over the microphone. If it's really, really windy, you're going to really struggle. You'll need to get something called a fluffy, which is like a koala skin over the end of the microphone just to stop that wind noise really hitting the microphone. So five top tips. These are going to be pretty quick. These. So the five top tips for better video. Use your hands and your elbows. Lock them into your body and try and make a tripod. That will stop things moving around. If you're on a boat, lean against the mast. If you're uh, somewhere that's in a confined area, lean against the wall. But keep that vision steady. It's really, really crucial to the person that's watching it. Smartphones don't just do everything that quickly. They're not that smart. They do need a little bit of user interaction to happen. So where you want the camera to look at and focus on is where you need to press the screen. That screenshot there is of an iPhone. It's pretty much the same across most smartphones. Tap the screen where you want the point of focus. So that focus point there that we can see would be focusing onto the clouds and not onto the trees. If you want it to go onto the trees, you literally need to press your finger on the tree. It will adjust the focus, it will adjust the exposure, and you'll get a much better bit of vision as well, much better video. Um, Shoot from different angles. This is really about edited video. So if you're going to tell a story, um, think about trying to jump in and out of that story. Um, there's a great example on the last slide. That's this garden tour in San Francisco where somebody has literally taken a video of, of a garden. And it might not seem that fascinating, but they've gone through the whole of the garden. and They've chopped together clips of video. So the screen grab on the left hand side just shows my little pug far away in the middle and then close up. So there's three different lines there, three different videos. If you can chop between the three different styles of video there, so it will give people a much better idea and understanding of the tour. So if you're doing a video of someone and they're snorkeling, get a bit that's just above their head as they're snorkeling through the water. Get a nice wide shot so you can see the reef around them. It just allows people to really um, grasp a lot better what they're experiencing. Let there be light. So smartphones and compact cameras don't have good sensors. They don't let much light in. Therefore, you need to think about having light on your subject. If you're doing an interview, have them face into the sun. It might mean they squint, but it means you're going to get their features. You're going to see their eyes, even if they are squinting slightly. Um, and it allows you to really for the viewer to engage with that person a lot better and get them to take their sunglasses off. It's the, it's the coolest thing in the world to be wearing sunglasses. But if you can see the reflection of the person that's taking the video, that's the thing you're going to be concentrating. The viewer will be concentrating on and necess not necessarily the, the subject that they're talking about. So framing your shot. I was told this one by my dear wife. She said, Ben, don't take photos from below. I have a double chin when you do that. <laughs> So put the camera level, make sure you're level with the person. Um, if you're going to shoot them, um, put them off to the side. That one in the middle is me, but it's not a very attractive shot. The one on the right is of a girl who is framed up nicely. She's sitting on the right-hand side of the frame and she's talking to the left-hand side of the camera. So it looks a lot more professional. When you're looking at news interviews, have a quick look at them. Take into account that you could be doing this on a phone. Take an interview. Think about where you're going to put some graphics. If you're going to edit this video and put the name of the girl up, it will probably fit on the left-hand side of that little frame you've got there. So that might be, there's Jane sitting there having her interview done. Um, just think about that. And also the start and the end of the day, that golden hour is when everything will look a little bit better. You won't get bright, bright sunlight that's bleaching people's features out. They won't squint and everything will look that much better. So that's the five tips to getting better video. 
I'm gonna go through these quickly. Now I need to, do I need to edit what I've shot? You don't need to, but editing makes a huge difference. It's a much more professional way of doing it because you can cut out the bad footage. Um, you can add together a series of clips to tell the story. You can add your own titles and your website details. And if someone finds your website, your uh, video on YouTube, how do they know it's you as an operator? Well, if you can put your website details in the description, and you can also put it in the video itself as a slide, people can come out and visit you and your website and find out much more about what you're doing and hopefully book a trip or an experience or visit the area. You can also add voiceovers and music. So it just means that you can basically get people to, um, I suppose if it's a dive video, you don't want to hear, hear bubbles from the scuba tank the whole time. It just allows you to think of BBC documentary. Think how beautiful some of the music is they use in those, those pieces. It just allows people to relax and immerse themselves in the video. Editing is very time consuming if you need it to be, so shoot it right in the first place. That's one of the key things about editing. You do have a chance on lots of different platforms to edit these days, um, whether it's on a full scale um, desktop at home, which gives you obviously the chance to blow your vision up to full screen, which is what I do. You can do it on a laptop on the move. Um, there's different programs to allow you to do that. So you've got Windows Movie Maker, um, Adobe Premiere. Their, um, uh, Windows Movie Maker is certainly a freebie. Um, iMovie is a freebie with, with Apple. Um, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro are more expensive. Um, they're not vastly expensive. You're going to look at doing lots of videos throughout the course of the year. It's a worthwhile investment. Um, you can also do them on your tablet. So for 3 to $5, I know that on an iPad you can buy iMovie. And then you can use all of your footage you've shot on your smartphone or your iPad or your tablet. You can import it into iMovie and you can share it directly from there and scale it down one more level, you can do exactly the same again on your smartphone. So sharing your content, this is very much the last few slides now. So sharing your content, you've got Facebook and Twitter, which are your short, fun, simple pieces designed for instantaneous video upload. Um, you're not really gonna edit too much that goes onto those. If you want to, you can, but usually that's where I would put things on YouTube. If it's something you've taken the time and effort to shoot properly and you've edited, get it onto YouTube, and from YouTube, you can then share it back onto your Twitter and Facebook channels. Once you've got the video out there, and you can see it's there on your channel, you can find the share button, and it will give you a multitude of different ways to share it back out to Facebook and Twitter. Um, you can upload to any of these through your phone or with a camera through your website. So within my iPhone now, I know that I can share any video directly to e any of those three platforms above. Make sure you fill out all the details. Once you've put your video up there, be pretty pretty good about putting everything you can in there. So add a good title. If it's about um, snorkeling in the wet Sundays, maybe put um, fantastic snorkeling around the wet Sundays as your title. In your description, put a paragraph about where you were, the time of year, what you saw. Add your website details to that part. So at the very start of a description, I'll always put www.bensouthwell.com because people will then see your website and usually click out and come and find it. Um, like or follow other businesses' video content, okay? So ones within the area. So find the mantra accommodation, find the local coffee shop, find their Facebook pages and go on there and like them. If they're friends of yours, they'll share your content and you can share theirs. Quick thing about copyright. Um, copyright applies offline, uh, online as well as off. If you haven't got permission to use it, then don't. It's quite a, th a thing I do these days to cover myself is to always have a talent release form. So if you're going to interview somebody who's just come off a boat and had a great day's experience, get them to sign a talent release form. You can find templates online that will allow you to basically use their vision. You can basically, you're using their, their, their smiles and their face and their experience to promote your business. Therefore, you need to get their permission to do that. Um, don't use Google for images um, because that's not a free wear of, of photos. People have put them up there and they, they'll come out of web pages. So make sure you know if you're going to use an image that you've got the owner's permission to go and do it. Or you go onto one of the, the, the licensing sites like iStock or Shutterstock or Getty Images, which allows you to go there and buy that, those images for your own use. Same sort of thing goes to music. Let's go back onto there. Same sort of thing goes to music for video. Um, YouTube now have a... a a platform on there where you can add music from their library and it is free for you to use. But you can't just go onto iTunes, take your lovely um, Katie Melua track and put it over the top of your YouTube video because it will be identified by YouTube automatically and it therefore won't get broadcast in some countries that have broadcast restrictions on them. So make sure you know that. Right, we're pretty much on the dot well done, at 12 well o'clock. So by the time we've got through this, even though I've talked far too quickly, 
you should know about the best equipment to use, so the smartphone or the compact camera ideally for creating those videos, um, how and when to put things up there, so the fun, engaging stuff as much as you can, the more polished stuff um, up to YouTube on maybe a weekly or two weekly basis. Find a member of staff who likes using their phone all the time. If you see someone, Johnny is always on his phone, put him to your use. He is being employed and paid for by you, so get him to become the guy that creates your video content for you. You know how to track and monitor it, so you can go into your Facebook channel or your YouTube page now and see who's, who's viewing it and what works. Um, how to take the best video for your business, and now where to go and load, share, and distribute that video across digital platforms so that you can get the best use for all of your time and all of the time you're gonna to take to create those videos and how best to promote yourself. That there is the last slide. That's the crucial one. So, we, Jane, are we going to distribute this? Yes, we are. We're recording this. Okay. And it will be on the Digital Ready website <clears throat> shortly. Um, so, we'll just leave this slide up for a little bit longer so that people have a chance to read it all because obviously you won't Absolutely. Because this is, you can't click through from there. So, there are, out of that presentation, there's five slides that I had that have got really good videos that summarize what I was talking about. I think we'll take a snapshot and maybe we'll email it out to the people that have yeah, got as well because then they can that. click directly out. Sure thing. They're just great examples of, of the videos we've used. Um, and that's the guy, the gang. There's Jane on the left. There's Susan and there's Mirko, um, the team that usually hosts these and do these things around the state. Um, and you want to wrap this up? I will. Yeah. Um, have you got time for some questions? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So Let's... we can see the question icons come up. So if you do, have been patiently waiting for us to answer your question. Um, let's have a look and we'll answer them now. If you do have to go and we haven't got to you, don't worry, we will have a look um, this afternoon and make sure that we email the answer to your question. If we think it's going to be useful for everyone, we'll email everyone. If not, we'll just um, email the person that asked the question. But let's just have a quick look and see if there are any more. One from Stuart. Um, can a video be too polished from Stuart? Um, I don't think so. Um, I run a video production company these days and I still, when I go back to something that's two months old, look at it and look at what I could have changed and what I could have updated or made different. Um, I think don't be too critical, certainly for social media, for the instant feeds of Facebook and Twitter, you don't need to worry too much about it. As long as it's uh, not something that's gonna be embarrassing to you down the line, as long as it's, um, it captures the moment, as long as it allows people to see what they are potentially coming to do as part of your experience, it's a good thing to go up there. So I don't think you can over polish things. Uh, if you do, you'll be doing what I do sometimes and working in your cave in the dark with the screen on, getting bleary eyes, working on video for too long. So just for social media, certainly get it out there as quick as you can. Okay, thanks Stuart. The ones that come, okay, so how many tags? Okay, how many tags should I attach to a video? Well, I, I suppose it's infinite, but it's the ones that are relevant. So let's take an example of snorkeling in the Whit Sundays when I see some whales. I would, for instance, for a snorkeling in the Whit Sundays one, have Whit Sundays, so I'd have Early Beach, I'd have Queensland and Australia. So I'd have my location references. I'd also probably have the operator I went out with, so it might be Whit Sunday catamarans. I'd certainly have snorkeling, I'd have Great Barrier Reef, I'd have Coral Sea, I'd have humpback whale, I'd have coral, um, I'd have, and that's probably it. So that's 10, that's probably getting to too many, but if you can get it, if you can do between five and maybe 10, that's probably the right sort of number to be attaching as tags to a video. Um, we have we? copyright on music, it's certainly yeah, been addressed there. It's something that I don't think, um, if you go into YouTube these days, you can certainly use their standard stock library video. They've got some great stuff in there. You can choose it on mood and feeling and tempo. So you can go in there and choose the style of music that you want to have and add it to your video later. Um, if you're going to do it for Twitter and uh, Facebook, it's not so relevant. But if it's a permanent fixture that's going up there on YouTube and it's going to be on your website, absolutely. Make sure you can. And there's, there are some websites around uh, that you can actually go on to. So free play music. Um, dot com is one website where you can go in and actually choose from a whole catalogue of maybe 5,000 songs the sort of music you want based on tempo and feeling um, and speed, all those sorts of things. So if you're doing something that's about an action adventure race, you can go and find specific music for that sort of thing. Um, you can then go in there, agree to their license conditions that it's solely going to be for your use for one person or one company. They'll give you. They'll send you a license to that um, email, your email address, and then you can use it. But you've got to make sure you satisfy all of their requirements on where you're broadcasting it to first. 
So the release form, just a quick one there, and a release form for people to sign. Talent release forms are essential if you're going to be using the public in your video. Now, there is always this very fine line to trade with children, obviously, anyone under the age of 18. Um, I generally try and steer away from just because of potential implications anywhere. And if you're going to engage with adults and you're going to interview them, a talent release form is a good thing. I've just signed one this morning for Tourism Queensland for a video I did for them about six months ago. Basically, if you go onto the web and you type in talent release form template, you'll be able to find there one that you can adjust to your own company. So it will basically just say, I, and you put in the person's name, so Joan Woodley, 